Good afternoon, everybody. We're here uh, this afternoon to announce the arrest of Garrett James Smith on uh, charges of loitering and prowling in three counts of making, possessing, or discharging a destructive device. Smith's date of birth is January 6, 2000. He's 22 years old, and he resides at 1484 East Lake Woodlands Parkway in Oldsmar. Here's what led to Smith's arrest. On September 30th, 2021, Jeremy Brown was booked into the Pinellas County Jail on federal charges stemming from the January 6th incident at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. A federal judge ordered Brown held without bond pending trial. Brown is, Brown is being held at the Pinellas County Jail because we have a contract with the United States Marshal Service to hold federal prisoners in the Tampa Bay area. Brown is not facing any state charges and he was not jailed by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Brown's arrest and incarceration has certain groups upset and they have posted their opposition to Brown being held in jail on various, <clears throat> excuse me, various social media sites. Uh, these groups claim that Brown is a political prisoner. The opposition groups also organized two protests at the Pinellas County Jail, one back in November and one yesterday on the one year anniversary of the event at the Capitol. Yesterday's protest uh, began at 5 o'clock p.m. Approximately 85 protesters gathered in the East End parking lot of the Pinellas County Courthouse along the driveway access to the jail. The protesters waved signs and they made speeches opposing Brown's incarceration. The protest was due to end at about 8 o'clock last night. At about 7.30 p.m., Pinellas County Sheriff's Office deputies saw Garrett Smith running eastbound through the parking lot, which is east of 49th Street. So the protest, and as you can see here on this map to my left, you'll see where the protest was occurring, uh, which is here. And Brown was over here on the east side of 49th Street, where he was first seen by deputies was right here to the east uh, of these buildings and on the north side of that parking lot. And so he was seen by the deputies uh, running, and he was dressed in all black. He had a black covering over his face, and he was carrying a black backpack. Uh, he was running fast, and it looked like that he was fleeing from something. As you can see here from the map and the diagram, <clears throat> he continued to run east and then ran uh, north. He was caught by deputies at 144th Avenue west of 46th Street. After catching Smith and conducting an investigation, deputies arrested Smith on charges of loitering and prowling. They searched Smith's backpack incident to his arrest and found a pipe type explosive device. You can see here in these photographs uh, to my right, the third one down, which is the pipe explosive device that was found inside Smith's backpack. Also in the backpack was a black helmet, and that's depicted there in the second poster to my right or to your left. The black helmet uh, with colors on it and logos that resemble logos, logos that have been seen in protest by groups in Oregon and in other places of the country. According to Smith's family, he had been in Portland, Oregon, and returned several months ago. There was also a document in Smith's backpack titled Direct Action Checklist, or as he put it with the acronym D-A-C-K. And that's this document here uh, to my right. Uh, as you'll be able to see on the D-A-C-K, it contains a layout of the clothing Smith was to wear and what's listed is in fact consistent with what he was wearing when he was arrested last night. The list includes all black clothing and a black face covering. The next category on Smith's list is what he calls armor. So you can see there at the top, it's got the clothing and then it's got a list of armor. And within that section of his list, it contained uh, a black helmet uh, with armor, black vest 
knee guards, elbow pads, and a personal shield. The third category, which is the one at the bottom of the list and it's the most extensive, is titled gear and it is to be kept in a backpack and it includes a gas mask and filters, pepper spray, smoke rockets, and flammable rags. After finding the explosive device, deputies called the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office bomb squad to the scene and bomb technicians determined that the device was in fact an active explosive device. Deputies had cleared the area uh, around the courthouse and along 49th Street of protesters and others, and we didn't find any other explosive devices that had been planted in the area. Smith's car was located a short distance from where he was arrested by deputies. So as you can see here, the orange dot to my left at the middle of this map, and then you can see Smith's car, which is just to the north and uh, to the east. Inside the car, deputies found a bag of M80 fireworks. Deputies also obtained a search warrant uh, for Smith's residence and located another pipe-type explosive device along with hand grenade-type explosives in Smith's bedroom. Nails that are used in these explosive devices and duct tape were also located with the explosive device at Smith's home, and those are depicted in the poster the furthest down here in the row on my right, and those are the devices that were in the backpack in his bedroom. We have a close-up of the hand grenade type devices that are laying on the bed there in the top photo uh, on that board to the furthest down on my right. Smith uh, refused to give any information. He refused to talk to deputies. So we really have no idea as to what his political leanings are and whether he supported or opposed the protesters at the jail. We also don't know exactly what his plan was or why Smith was running away from the protest area when he was apprehended by deputies and before he had an opportunity to detonate the explosive device. Smith has no criminal history, no social media accounts that we can find, and there's no prior intelligence information about Smith. Smith is what we call a sleeper, and these are the most concerning individuals because there's no opportunity to intervene and thwart their criminal activity until they actually act. We're fortunate in this situation that something uh, caused Smith to flee before he ignited the explosive device and that deputies were able to apprehend him. We've been in communication with the FBI and this investigation is ongoing in conjunction with them and other federal law enforcement partners. Smith is currently being held in the Pinellas County Jail on $300,000 bond. So that's what we know and explains the situation that happened. Uh, I'm uh, open to take any questions that you have. Sheriff, was his plan to blow up the rally, you believe, or? Well, we don't know. You know, Josh, that's the problem is, is because he's not talking. Uh, he certainly had his plan laid out. Uh, he had an explosive device with him. He had more explosive devices at his house. Uh, from the best we can tell, he never made it onto the west side of 49th Street. He stopped on the east side, but he was there all dressed in black. He had the helmet. He had the face covering. I mean, he was decked out, and you can see here in this photograph to my left is that we've got the photograph of him uh, after he was arrested and his clothing was removed, but that's what he looked like there as he was running. So, I mean, he was concealed and uh, decked out in all the black, and he had all the tools to do it. Something caused him not to actually uh, detonate it. Now, how he was going to do it, I have no idea. Was he going to throw it into the crowd? Was he going to place it someplace? Uh, what, what his plan was, I really, just really don't know. Are these pipe devices, are they homemade? <coughs> these or? are homemade, yes. And they were not fireworks, they are actual filled with shrapnel and stuff? Well, it, is that it appears that they are. Again, the investigation's ongoing. We found the nails that were there on the bed, uh, and typically what you'll find is the nails are going to be embedded in there. The uh, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office uh, bomb unit is currently going through the hand grenades and the devices themselves and the process of dissecting them, but what they told us was they were active explosive devices. So we need to let them do their work before we can determine uh, exactly what's inside, what the quantity is in there, whether it's nails or whether it's something else, but it does look like it's nails from what we found. To clarify, he was running with the explosive devices on him or he had placed them at the scene? I'm, I'm sorry, say these. Had he placed the explosive devices at the scene or he was running? No, he, so he, had, he had the explosive device that's here in that photograph, which is the third one down. 
he had that explosive device in a backpack that he was carrying. So he had not placed the explosive device. Um, something happened, and, you know, we can speculate as to what happened, but I can tell you that coincidentally to this, now we had, because of the protest out there last night, is we had undercover detectives out there that were in the middle of it. We had uniformed deputies in the area, but coincidentally, we were also working a, a pretty significant traffic enforcement detail on the Bayside Bridge, and deputies were up and down 49th Street with lights on doing traffic stops during this. Did that uh, cause him? Did that affect him? and maybe a reason why he didn't go across the street. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, we've been asking that question all day and all night last night trying to figure this out about why he didn't affect his plan uh, fully because he was prepared to do it. He was all dressed. He had the device. He had his plan. He had his written document that explains it all. He had more at home but why he actually didn't do it. Something happened because it caused him to flee, and, it, and uh, based upon what the deputies saw, he was running fast. He was running away from something. So something caused him, and when he ran, of course, he was trying to get to his car. So something caused him to want to get out of there quickly and take off, but I don't know what it is. Did he ever interact with any of the protesters? He was always on the opposite side of the road trip. Yeah, for, we have not been able to determine that he actually interacted with any of the protesters, and again, I don't know whether he was in support or in opposition to the protesters. Um, it's hard to tell. The only thing that I can tell you is, is that that helmet with those colors and some of the arrows and the diagrams are consistent with what you see protesters that have worn in other protests in Portland where he was and in some other places. Uh, but I can't tell you again whether it's in support or opposition to these people who were out there last night. Uh, I, I just don't know. Okay. No affiliation to any person. No, we can't find anything on this guy. I mean, like I said, he's he's a sleeper, and and those are the ones that are that are most concerning, and it's the hardest to figure out because there's absolutely nothing out there. And we've checked with authorities out in Portland. We've checked with the FBI. We've uh, scoured social media. We've checked all the indices and databases and resources that we have. And I tell you, one of the things that's very unusual is we find no social media. Uh, that, especially in this day and age for somebody that's 22 years old, that's very unusual. So uh, he might ha have it under some pseudo names. Uh, it, there could be a number of explanations. And that's why it's an ongoing investigation, because we still want to try and figure out what this guy's motivation was. Which side was he on in this? Is his family cooperating? His family's been cooperating. When you look at devices like this, can you describe how destructive this could have been had he decided to take that extra step? Yeah, it could have been very destructive, and he could have hurt a lot of people, uh, you know, depending upon the number of nails or whatever other things are inside the explosive devices, because that's what they do. They, they pack it with those, and then it goes off, and people are going to be hit by it. So, I mean, people could have been hit in the face and eyes and all kinds of things. It just So it just depends. But it had the potential to be uh, very harmful uh, to people, and especially with what he had at home. He had an exact replica or another one of the, the one that was in his backpack, Plus, he had those uh, hand grenade looking devices. And again, we're still in the process of trying to figure it out, but it looks like there's probably nails inside of those. So, what was he going to do after last night? Uh, where was he going to go next? What is he going to do? Of course, we don't know the answer to that, but he had all the equipment to cause destruction. And you said he's from Maryland? No, he is, as far as we know, uh, he's, his family lives in Oldsmar, uh, in East Lake Woodlands. Uh, he was recently out in Portland, Oregon. Uh, he returned several months ago from being out there, um, and that's really what we know about him at this point. When he imposed his Fifth Amendment rights, did he say who his lawyer was or ask for a lawyer? No, he just he didn't want to talk. Did his family indicate that they had any knowledge he was building these or had these in his possession? There was no indication of that. Um, they, they really didn't offer much in that regard. When you see the markings have been seen at protests in the Pacific Northwest, um, markings that with on the Antifa side or the Proud Boys side, I mean, you, you know. We're trying to figure it out, I mean, and, and I'm going to be cautious about that because I don't want to say because I don't know. Um, and it, it is that when you see it out there with some of those, uh, it's really hard to tell. We're, we're trying to figure that out uh, because that would help us and give us some indication as to what his uh, political and philosophical leanings are. Uh, but I, I've seen some on that, and you can look at it yourself. I've seen some on it that were in Portland, but they seem to be anti-Biden. They seem to be, which 
should be kind of the other way. So I, I you know, in some respects. So I, I just don't know, Josh. Really, uh, it, it, this is one of those big mysteries at this point because we have a void of information uh, because there's no background on this guy and he wouldn't talk. You say three or four grenades at the house. Four. Four and then two pipe bombs. And two bomb, two pipe bombs, right? Yep. Yep. He did. He, he went to court today, uh, and the judge again set the bond at three hundred thousand dollars plus uh, whatever it is on the loitering and prowling, which is a small amount, and a number of other conditions. If you were to bond with electronic monitoring, and he's confined to his house, etc. But it's a pretty significant bond amount. Are you able to release any of the uh, body camera footage this time, Sheriff, sure, from the uh, arrest interaction? We do, but I'm not going to release it at this point. The investigation's ongoing, but there is body camera footage of the arrest. Yes. From you can see, you, right, it's, that, that's a clip from the body camera. From speaking of people who were at the protest, did he ever make it across the road? Did he ever go over the new bank? Well, and I can't tell you definitively that he did or did not. Uh, we cannot show him across the street, um, but we can't say for sure. And so nobody really knows. Um, you know, again, the first place we saw him was on the east side of 49th Street as he was running to the east right back in here in this area. So it, again, he wasn't on a radar. Nobody was looking for this guy. He, now I would say, he, the way he was dressed, if he had made it across the street and he was mixed in with that crowd, he would have stuck out. And we did have undercover detectives out there and nobody saw anything. But did he ever make it across or was he close by or did he get there? I, can t I feel pretty comfortable that he didn't make it into the crowd because of the way he was dressed, it would have stuck out and it would have caused, I would imagine, uh, a lot of attention to be drawn to him. But uh, did he ever get closer than what he was? We just simply don't know. You know, we've tried to look at uh, video cameras out there, et cetera, and, and we really just can't make that determination. Uh, did he stop at the edge of the road, saw something, and turned around? He, I mean, he clearly parked his car a good distance away, uh, and he came up in, in some type of stealth way. Because if you're going to something, you don't park way back there to the north and to the east. You're going to go right there and you're going to park. So clearly he's up to no good. And, and that's what people do when they're up to no good. They park away. They conceal themselves. They walk up in some sort of self stealth way, do whatever it is they're going to do that's bad, and then they flee out of there. Um, so it, it, something, something thwarted him from doing it. Have you had the chance to speak with any of the protesters on the other side there? No, no, we, we haven't. Yeah. That was all peaceful, right? Yeah, that was all peaceful. No, they're fine. Uh, they're just out there doing what they do, and they, they cause no problems. They're absolutely fine in their protesting, no issues. You said the area was cleared, so was this after the protest, or was it was still ongoing? No, it was still ongoing. We had to ask them to leave uh, because of this. What we were concerned about is, because we didn't know at that point, we find the one uh, explosive device in his backpack, and we had no idea whether he had planted other explosive devices that could have been detonated. So we asked everybody to, believe, to, to leave. We brought in uh, explosive dogs. We searched the area with those explosive canines. We had the helicopter up uh, with heat sensing. We did a number of things, and we made sure that area was clear and secure. But so now we asked them to leave because it was, you know, a situation that was unknown. Probably, probably about. Uh, 7.40, 7.45, probably, probably about 15 minutes or so before the protest was scheduled to end. Did that activity make the protest end early? 15 minutes. You know, and, and under the circumstances, they were very cooperative. I mean, they didn't want to be there with that type of potential threat. See, they were told that there was a problem. Does he live with his parents? Did he does. He lives with his parents. Uh, parents and siblings. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you,